Today on Shop Nation, we start the long-awaited cabinet build in the shop. Mm -hmm. What's up, Shop Nation? Today, I am going to go through the process of building the upper cabinets, the first half. This is gonna be a build series, which starts with the upper cabinets and finishes with the lower. So if you wanna check it out, subscribe. Let's get to it. So before we get started, any good design starts with a good plan. So what I've done is I've laid out how the cabinets are gonna look in relation to the bottom cabinets that I have yet to build. So I knew I had a fixed distance that I had to build within, and I also had to include an opening for my miter saw. I went ahead and made cut sheets for all of my parts. If you haven't done this before, it's a really good idea. The first order of business with any cabinet build is to break down the sheets of plywood. For my particular project, I'm using five sheets of three quarter inch plywood. Cut sheets are great because they help me optimize my cuts to get the most out of the least amount of material. My crosscut sled being 21 inches deep really helped make quick work of most of the pieces. Larger pieces require a different method, so I'm using a crosscut guide. With everything cut down to size, I did a quick inventory to make sure I had all my pieces. For the assembly of these cabinets, we're gonna do some really crazy joinery with some rabbit. I'm just kidding, we're gonna use pocket holes, of course, duh. So since I'm gonna to need to do a lot of pocket holes in large pieces of plywood, I took the time to put together a really simple jig to support the extended edges of the parts. Then it was really just a matter of adding all the pocket holes prior to assembly. Man, check out that convenient assembly table paper. Putting these cabinet bodies together is pretty straightforward. Glue it all the joints and pocket hole screws holding them together. Bob Bila would not be proud. Obviously, all of these pocket hole locations were chosen so that you couldn't see them in the final cabinet. This offset on the bottom piece is to mount the face frame, which we'll tackle later. Here's an example of where that Craig jig, jig comes in handy. I'm measuring in three quarters of an inch to install the cabinet back. This will allow a cleat system to hold the cabinet flush to the wall. All right, all of the carcasses are done. All that's left to add is the cleats so we can get them mounted. French cleats are a great way to mount cabinets because they're easy to take down and move if you ever need to.
Did someone say lumber storage? Holy crap. I've got to get all of that out of the way to make room for installation. With all the stud locations marked, I just mount the female version of the cleat on the wall, making sure, of course, everything is nice and level. The one downside to cleats is sometimes the cabinet sits a little funky throwing off your measurement. After adjusting the female cleat on the wall, second try goes much better. Time for shelf pin holes. It obviously may have been better to do this before, but whatever. You basically just use the jig to kind of inchworm up the side, creating consistent hole spacing for pins later. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna face off all of the cabinets, build the doors, and then paint them. But I'm not really sure what color to paint them, so if you have ideas, let me know. I'm thinking a dark gray, nothing too crazy. We'll see. Check out the description below where I will link products that I used in making the cabinets. And lastly, subscriber update. It's kind of a milestone. We just passed 3,000 subscribers as of shooting this video. Until next time.